Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Well, hello everybody again for another part in the Abandoned Repeater Site series. Those of you that have been following along, we've been having a great time with this series. And uh, we headed up to the old mountaintop here to uh, begin troubleshooting the Monticello Repeater. Now, the Abandoned Repeater Site, as you know, uh, is uh, got an old shack on it that's not useful. We've got the existing tower with a lot of cabling on it that doesn't need to be there anymore. We inherited this many, many, many years ago. And and uh, so we're in the process of cleaning this up, as you've seen. But when we installed the repeater and selected an antenna that we thought uh, we had been using months ago, and I mean months ago, um, we were getting no uh, nobody coming into the repeater unless you were standing right next to it. Uh, we hooked everything up. Uh, you know, we've got our cables here coming from the duplexers, and uh, we thought, hey, this is going to be, you know, uh, install the rack, power everything up, get the batteries in there, and we should be good to go. So here we are putting the uh, connectors on uh, the little elbow 90 degrees here, so we can shut the uh, back door. And uh, you know, we're we're really excited. We thought this wasn't going to take very long at all. Well, lo and behold, we start running some tests and uh, nothing. Now, this particular little MFJ uh, unit will do SWR. So you can test the SWR coming out of the repeater, going out to the antenna, as well as check the power that you're getting out of the repeater. And you can see those little dials on the right-hand side. You can adjust uh, 70 centimeters as well as 2 meters. And, uh, you know, if you watch this... Uh, this uh, video long enough, this little snippet here, you'll notice that the meter doesn't move on the left at all. This is not a still shot. <laughs> this is this is us uh, running some tests, and it's just not the the repeater was not putting out any power, and we could not uh, for the life of us figure out because before we moved it, we had tested everything. It's not like we uh, uh, hadn't tested everything. So now we're kind of at a loss. What could this be? So we start taking all kinds of things apart. We start looking at the programming. So here we're looking at uh, connecting to it through its COM port and uh, checking the programming. It does use a PL tone. Uh, we use a tone going in and out so that if you want to knock down um, extraneous uh, uh, signals coming into your, your base station or your portable, you can do that. So we do a tone on both ends. Um, but the programming looked just fine. And there didn't seem to be anything that could have been you know out of place. So move on to the next piece. Now in IT that would have been going to layer 7 in the OSI model. What we need to do is come down to layer 1 which is the physical layer and let's double let's double check things and uh, so we started pulling cables off left and right. Um, we were really at a loss. We could not figure out what this could have been. Now maybe something in transit. Uh, we initially thought it was the repeater itself. Maybe the repeater when we had a problem with it at the uh, the site we had it at before, maybe it uh, it burned out the finals. We just didn't know. In fact, we had even opened up an RMA ticket with uh, the vendor to maybe ship it back so that they could have a look at it. But before we do all that, let's remove all these cables and let's check them out. Nobody likes to do this stuff because it's tedious, but it needed to be done. Sure enough, we started taking a look at those uh, elbows, those 90 degree elbows uh, that we use, and look how boogered up it is. Uh, boogered up is a technical term here in Kentucky. And it uh, is actually grounding um, to the shielding when you insert it. And that's what was preventing. They were both that way. It wasn't just the receive. It wasn't just the uh, transmit. They were both like that, and it was awful looking. I had never seen one of these look this poor um, ever in my little short IT uh, or, uh, ham radio career. So uh, we got to replace those, that's for sure. And uh, we went ahead while we were in there. Let's go ahead and check, you know, all the cables just to make sure everything is good to go. So we know what the culprit is at this point, or at least one of them. So we start moving on to testing cables, you know, get out the multimeter, start checking, and so that's what we're doing here. You're going to hear, uh, I think, a tone. I've got the audio turned down on this, but uh, there was a tone in this particular case, and uh, nothing. 
or, or you know, we got a tone we were supposed to, and we didn't get a tone, meaning a short, when we weren't supposed to. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and change out the batteries. Now, right now, we do not have the commercial power hooked up to the shack. Um, uh, we were running through some headaches on that end, so we thought, well, let's go ahead and put in a couple of fresh batteries. Uh, we had had the old batteries in there, or the, the newer ones. We bought another pair here, and we thought we'll swap them out, and we'll figure out something on the power side a little bit down the road. So here you can see the bus bars that we're going to use across the batteries just to make sure that we have enough power. Uh, to run the repeater until we can get a more permanent solution. Um, these repeaters, typically this particular repeater, uh, doesn't run all the time. Uh, certainly not uh, so often that you'd have to worry about the batteries all that much. So that's what we're uh, doing here is installing those batteries, installing those bus bars, and uh, we'll have enough power for weeks, you know, really, when you think about it. So uh, here's uh, AC40M just finishing up the installation of the uh, the batteries there. And then we're going to move on to running some tests because we think we've got the cables now checked out. We think we've got the little elbow connectors. We've got those replaced. So we should be in a pretty good spot. But we had been disappointed before, so you know how things are. Uh, we want to uh, double check things again and make sure that it's going to work the next time. So we're about to move on to some of those tests. So here we are looking at the same unit after we've made all of our adjustments, replaced some parts and so forth. And uh, cameraman's not that stable. That'd be me. Uh, but here we're going to key up the mic here in just a second, and you'll be able to see that we're actually getting power out. And we all did a kind of a sigh of relief because <laughs> we've been futzing around with this for quite some time. So um, it was good to see power coming out, and uh, uh, that gave us uh, some warm and fuzzies. Now, we haven't tested it with people yet, really, but now we're starting to feel like we're coming down the home stretch. And what we did here is we switched it over to uh, standing wave ratio, SWR. We just wanted to double check again that from the repeater out to the antenna, it's not going to see some ungodly amount of um, uh, signal coming back. And so we ran some tests. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but that needle moves ever so slightly. So the SWR has been dialed in to practically zero. So we're in really good shape there. So now it's a matter of just getting on the air and testing this thing. So the lights here, you can see we've got yellow, green, and red. The yellow and the green should come on when somebody comes into the repeater and is validated with their tone. If you don't have the right tone, the yellow light will come on, but the green light, the valid light, won't come on if you don't have the correct tone. So you can see we're testing it out. Uh, we had a member utilizing uh, their uh, portable, I think it was, and it was set in a way that really wasn't, uh, uh, it was just bursting the tone. It wasn't a continuous tone, so it wasn't uh, keeping the repeater up. But we did have some other folks come through and get both the yellow and the green light on and, of course, transmit out. And so we had some successful tests there. KY4BDP testing Monticello repeater. Good morning, AC40M, on this good Thanksgiving day. Thanks for coming back. I'm just doing a quick little snippet here to finish up a video. So appreciate you coming back on this and hope you and Wanda have a great Thanksgiving. Here, no problem. Roger, roger. I'll let you go. This is KY4 BDP clear for now. Alrighty, so now we've run our test and the repeater is working like it should. Again, have a, a big heavy sigh of relief there. But that's not done. We've got batteries and that's all we've got in there right now. So we need to come up with a more permanent solution. And uh, I don't want to give it away. That's coming up in part, the next part of our abandoned repeater side series. But uh, just this little snapshot, maybe you can kind of figure out what we're trying to do. Maybe not. There's not a whole lot of information just with this quick little snapshot. But we are going to do a little bit more permanent option for power on the repeater. And that's what's coming up in our next video in the series. I want to thank everybody for coming along. And we did shoot uh, some of this prior to Thanksgiving but also just wanted to wish everyone a, a happy Thanksgiving as we move into the new year here pretty soon. So I'm KY4 BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Stay tuned for the next part in the series on the abandoned repeater site, and we'll see you down the road. 73s, everybody.